Who created you? Who gave you your body, the color of your eyes and hair? Who decided how tall you should be and what skin color you should have? Who created you along with everyone else, the earth and the sky and all living things between them? Who established the order in the planets, the sun and stars in the depths of space? Most people give exactly the same answer to these questions, saying, Allah created us. And there is no doubt that that is indeed the case. But how well do you know Allah, who created us and the whole universe down to the very tiniest detail? This film you are watching has been prepared in order to introduce you to our Lord, who is nearer to us than our jugular vein, by his titles revealed to us in the Quran. Al-Awal, the first. He is the first and the last, the outward and the inward. He has knowledge of all things. Did the universe have a beginning? This is one of the questions that man searched for an answer to for hundreds of years. Those people who grasped the fact that the universe had a creator also believed that it had a beginning. Some people, however, refused to accept the existence of a creator, for which reason they claimed that the universe had no beginning, that it had existed for all time and would continue to do so forever. The present level of science, however, has clearly demonstrated that these people were mistaken. A number of theses regarding the origin of the universe have been put forward, yet nowadays all scientific circles are agreed on one thing. One recent scientific discovery was able to shed light on the issue. It was discovered in 1929 by Edwin Hubble that the universe is constantly expanding. Using that fact as a starting point, scientists formulated an important hypothesis. If the flow of time in an expanding universe were reversed, then the whole universe could be thought of as a contracting system, like a giant star growing smaller and smaller, for instance. The inevitable conclusion is that a universe which grows smaller over time must eventually come to a single point. In other words, the universe formed with the expansion of that single point in an explosion. In short, the universe we live in did have a beginning. This in turn means that it was brought into being by an infinitely powerful creator. This infinitely powerful creator is the almighty Allah. And only he existed before living things, the planets, the galaxies, the entire universe, and even time itself had been created, because he is the first. Al-Adl, the just, the equitable. You who believe, show integrity for the sake of Allah, bearing witness with justice. 
Do not let hatred for a people incite you into not being just. Be just. That is closer to faith. Heed Allah alone. Allah is aware of what you do. Allah is the best of those who are just. The scale of His justice fills the whole universe. He will bring justice to His servants. In this world and the next, Allah, the all-hearing, all-knowing, and all-aware, directs the whole universe with ultimate wisdom and justice. Everything that people do throughout their lives will be weighed in the light of Allah's infinite justice. Allah has revealed in the Quran that wrongdoers will not go unpunished for their wrongdoing and that even a single good word will be rewarded. Good and evil are not the same in the sight of Allah and He rules between them with total justice. The place where the infinite justice of Allah is most clearly to be seen is the hereafter. It is sure that Allah is He who forgets nothing, the most faithful to His promises. Every human being, without exception, will be recompensed in the hereafter for his deeds in this world. Those who commit evil will be punished for it, and those who believe in Allah and do good deeds will receive the best possible reward from Him. al Afu, the Supreme Partner Whether you reveal a good act or keep it hidden, or pardon an evil act, Allah is ever-pardoning, all-powerful. By their very nature, people are prone to make mistakes. They can think wrongly on a great number of issues at any moment, make incorrect decisions, and behave in a wrong manner. Yet Allah, who created man and knows his flaws, also forgives mistakes that are made. If he were not forgiving, then not one person would be able to enter paradise. Yet we must not forget that Allah forgives his sincere servants. The important thing is for a person to be sincere and for him to submit to Allah in the full knowledge of his own helplessness. Allah forgives the sins of those who turn to Him sincerely. He has revealed this fact in the Quran. Allah only accepts the repentance of those who do evil in ignorance and then quickly repent after doing it. Allah turns towards such people. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. El Alim, the All Knowing. Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and earth. Allah knows what the heart contains. Allah possesses all knowledge of the heavens and the earth, all living things between them all the laws that apply in the universe and all things that happen at all times. Because it is Allah who creates them. Furthermore, there are no limits to Allah's knowledge. Allah knows the identities of everyone who is born or dies in the world and the number of leaves that fall from every tree and all this at one and the same time. He knows all the details of the billions of stars and the billions of galaxies in the universe and many other things that we can never list here. 
Our Lord knows everything that happens in our world and all that happens in space. He knows the generic codes of all the billions of people, animals and plants in the world. In one verse of the Quran he reveals, The keys of the unseen are in his possession. No one knows them but him. He knows everything in the land and sea. No leaf falls without his knowing it. There is no seed in the darkness of the earth, and nothing moist or dry which is not in a clear book. There is one very important secret that we must not forget. As well as all the things we have just listed, Allah also knows the hearts of men, what goes through their minds, and everything they do, whether openly or in secret. People think that only they know the emotions, thoughts, and anxieties they feel. Yet this is a great mistake. Just like He does everywhere else in the universe, Allah knows man inside out. Al-Azim, the Most Great. Everything in the heavens and everything in the earth belongs to Him. He is the Most High, the Most Great. Allah's greatness and majesty are very definitely beyond all human comprehension. Yet even so, we can still see and understand, within the limits of our minds, how mighty and powerful He is. Because the whole universe is full of countless examples that reveal His greatness. Even a brief examination of the world we live in will be enough to make us feel the greatness of Allah, the Creator of all. The sky that bears thousands of tons of clouds, mountains thousands of meters high, and the seas and forests with all the billions of life forms in them. These and countless other details are clear proof of the greatness of Allah. A minute or two's thought will be enough for man to realize that he needs to serve our Creator. In other words, the Almighty Allah, the Creator of all the universe, who controls all the billions of galaxies and the billions of stars in them. Al-Bari, the Maker He is Allah, the Creator, the Maker, the Giver of Form. To Him belong the most beautiful names. Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies Him. He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. There is equilibrium and harmony in everything in this universe we inhabit. As new advances are made, especially in the field of science, the hitherto unknown facts emerge that equilibrium and harmony grow ever clearer. Every system in the universe is the design of a superior intelligence. The possessor of that intelligence created everything within an amazing order. Every single body in the universe and all the billions of living things in this world continue to exist in a most magnificent order. That order in nature never fails, and that has been the case for millions of years. This stunning harmony between the universe and life on earth 
is a clear proof of Allah's creative artistry. Al Jaban, the Compeller. He is Allah. There is no God but Him. He is the King, the Most Pure, the Perfect Peace, the Trustworthy, the Safeguarder, the Almighty, the Compeller, the Supremely Great. Glory be to Allah. Above all, they associate with Him. The worst mistake that people make is to grow haughty in the face of Allah and become caught up in pride. Beneath this lies man's regarding himself as an entity independent of Allah. Believe that some of his characteristics have their origin in himself and thus granting himself a separate identity. This of course is totally irrational. If we stop to think, we can clearly see that we did not come into this world of our own accord, that we do not know when our lives will end, and that no one of our characteristics was given to us of our own choice. In the face of these facts, it is quite obvious how meaningless and unreasonable it is for man to grow haughty in the face of his own Creator. The fact is that man must understand the greatness of Allah and realize that it was He who created Him from nothing, and He who gives Him His characteristics and potential. Neither must he forget that Allah can take all His blessings back whenever He so chooses, and that all living things must one day die. He must accept that it is only Allah who is everlasting, and must submit Himself to Him. That is because Allah has the power to make all those who mistakenly grow proud before Him, who are unaware of their helplessness and turn their backs on Him, bow their heads whenever He wishes. Al-Haq, The Truth That is because Allah, He is the Truth and what you call upon besides Him is falsehood. Allah is the All-High, the Most Great. Time and space, living and dead are created concepts, just like everything else. A material world was created at a moment when there was no time and space, and the concepts of time and space grew within that world. If we were to go back in time, we would run up against that frontier, which there is no way of crossing. The oldest thing we can ever talk about is the creation of the universe. In fact, the limit identified by scientific circles today is some 10 minus 43rd powers seconds after the creation of the universe. Neither space nor time can be defined in the time span before that. At this point, we find ourselves in front of a dimension with neither time nor space. Since these two concepts by which man is limited were created at a particular moment, then there was timelessness and spacelessness before that creation. It is Allah who created these concepts beyond which we can never go, although He Himself is not bound by them. Allah is beyond time and space for which reason He exists in infinity. He is the only true existence. Everything save His being came into being because He so ordered it. Al-Kahar, the Subduer, the All-Conquering. On the day the earth is changed to other than the earth, and the heavens likewise, and they parade before Allah, the One, the All-Conquering. In the same way that Allah is capable of doing away with people's difficulties and easing their hearts, 
so he can also condemn them to terrible suffering. The Quran gives examples of nations who were destroyed by punishment sent by Allah. Since they have turned their backs on the true religion and rebelled against Allah, these people were destroyed by great disasters when they were not expecting them. This is a recompense given by Allah in this world to those who disbelieve. But the ultimate recompense those who do evil will get will be eternal torment in the hereafter because they did not measure Allah with his true measure and was ungrateful to him in the face of his infinite mercy. Al-Qudus, the Holy. Everything in the heavens and everything in the earth glorifies Allah, the King, the Holy, the Almighty, the All-Wise. Allah is the sole creator of everything on the earth, in the sky, in the depths of space and under the ground. The order, law and harmony that we can see just by looking around us all belong to Him. The worlds that we cannot see or perceive have also yielded to Allah. As revealed in the Quran, Allah keeps a firm hold on the heavens and earth, preventing them from vanishing away. And if they vanished, no one could then keep hold of them. Certainly, He is most forbearing, ever forgiving. It is our Lord who creates and maintains all things. Man, the servant of Allah, is totally helpless. He makes mistakes, forgets, is deceived and distracted. People are both physically and spiritually weak. All through their lives, they have to take care of their bodies and constantly pay great attention to them. If they make their bodies work a little too hard, go without sleep for a few days, or go one day without water, they become very weak. All these things are created for man to think about and learn from. Allah, the creator of all and the possessor of the most beautiful names, is exalted over all these imperfections. Malik ul Mulk, the eternal owner of sovereignty. Say, O Allah, owner of sovereignty, you give sovereignty to whoever you will. You take sovereignty from whoever you will. You exalt whoever you will. You abase whoever you will. All good is in your hands. You have power over all things. When you look around you, wherever you are now, everything you see has an owner. The chair you are sitting in is made up of atoms created by its owner. The flower in the pot grows because the sun and water given it by its owner. The ocean you see through the window and everything living in it are there because their owner so wishes. The owner of all these things and the entire universe is the almighty Allah. Lord of all the worlds. Even your body is under the control of He who created you, quite independently of you. Your limbs, veins, nervous system, and cells are all the product of your owner's superior knowledge and artistry. None of these things came about because you decided to design and create them. When you first opened your eyes on the world, you encountered both the flawless system in your own body as well as the world you live in and even the whole universe. 
yet you owned none of these things before. And neither will it be possible for you to do so of your own will in the future. This fact applies to all people, of course. That being the case, the sovereignty of everything belongs to our Creator, Allah, the Lord of all. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the All-Merciful and the Most Merciful. He is Allah. There is no God but Him. He is the knower of the unseen and the visible. He is the all-merciful, the most merciful. The infinite compassion and favor of Allah, the all-merciful, is represented in everything, visible or not. It is these, visible and invisible blessings that allow man to survive. Allah's mercy is everywhere. For instance, it is Allah who every day causes billions of seeds to sprout up from under the ground, who covers the whole planet with its internal temperature of 4,500 degrees with fertile soil, who causes tons of life-giving water to fall from the sky, who at the same time provides food for all the billions of living things all over the world who creates the oxygen that fills our lungs every minute and surrounds the countless things he has created with life-giving blessings. It is Allah who creates every single one of the 100 trillion cells in the human body, who teaches each one its own duties, who places the DNA that contains one million pages of information in each one, who has the whole system constructed by protein, fat and water molecules that he has squeezed into an area much smaller than a millimeter across, and uses these to give life to man and allow him to survive. From the moment they are born until they return to the soil, people know and recognize only the blessings bestowed upon them by Allah and live thanks to them. In the same way that some people see these blessings, understand the purpose behind their creation and serve Allah, there are others who are ungrateful and turn their backs on Him. Despite this, Allah still manifests His attribute of all-merciful in the most supreme way. Those who disbelieve still benefit from the air they breathe, the water they drink, and all the visible and invisible blessings in the life of this world. Allah gives them possessions, the nice houses they live in, and children to continue their lines, just as He does to believers. He gives them good provisions too, he gives them health, strength, and beauty. That is a manifestation of His attribute of the All-Merciful. Allah allows unbelievers to benefit from such things in the hope that maybe they will turn to religion, come to their reason, and give thanks. Yet it must not be forgotten that those who turn their backs on Allah's verses will only be able to enjoy His blessings in this world. In the hereafter, all blessings will only belong to the faithful who use the favors given them by Allah in order to draw closer to Him, seek His good pleasure, and give thanks. This is a manifestation of Allah's attribute of the Most Merciful, Razak, the provider. Truly Allah, He is the provider, the possessor of strength, 
the sure. Allah is most gentle and compassionate towards His servants and allows them to live on land that is full of blessings. To such an extent that soil produces shoots and greenery even when man does not work it. Out of that soil come yellow, green, red and orange fruits and vegetables. The bright blue seas are also full of thousands of delicious and different tasting fish. It is Allah, the provider, who gives us these things. Allah gives all these blessings to man in the life of this world. In paradise, far more beautiful blessings await the faithful. Allah draws attention to the superior nature of the blessings in paradise in the 17th verse of Surah 32. No self knows the delight that is hidden away for it in recompense for what it used to do. Shafi, the healer. When I am ill, it is he who heals me. One of the times in which man's helplessness is most apparent is that of sickness. In order that man should experience this feeling, Allah has created hundreds of kinds of different illnesses. Each sickness has different effects on a person's body and mind. Yet they are all evidence of a purposeful design. The way that a virus so small as to be invisible to the naked eye can make someone quite unrecognizable, and the way that a virus in the body may not always be able to be diagnosed, are clear evidence of Allah's might. The experiments and research that scientists carry out in order to do away with just one virus reveal the superiority of Allah's creation to all. Since it is Allah who inflicts these illnesses, one can only recover from them by His will. If Allah so chooses, He can remove a sickness with His attribute of the healer. And in fact, if He does not so will it, not all the doctors in the world the most advanced technological equipment and the very latest medicines can cure a person's illness. All medicines are a means whereby somebody can be cured. If Allah wishes, He can permit the treatment being applied to act as a means of effecting a cure. Needless to say, even a very simple appearing illness can lead to death unless Allah wills otherwise. This being the case, what people need to do is to compare their own helplessness to our Lord's infinite might and ask for His help whenever they are in difficulties. Do not forget that we have no other helper or protector than Allah. the receiver of repentance. As for those who repent and put things right and make things clear, I turn towards them. I am the receiver of repentance, the most merciful. Man's soul is prone to make mistakes at any time, commit sins and fall into temptation. He also has an enemy, Satan, who constantly tries to get him to rebel against Allah and whispers him anxieties. Allah, however, has shown man a means whereby he can rectify his mistakes. Repentance As we have already seen, anyone can make a mistake at any time. 
commit a sin or fall a prey to Satan's whisperings. Yet no matter how terrible a person's mistake, there is always a way back. Allah accepts His servants' sincere repentance and forgives them. For that reason, it is never right to fall a prey to despair, no matter what one has done in the past. Al-Wali, the protecting friend. Allah is the protector of those who believe. He brings them out of the darkness into the light. But those who disbelieve have false gods as protectors. They take them from the light into the darkness. Those are the companions of the fire, remaining in it timelessly, forever. A believer has one true friend, both in this world and the hereafter. That friend will never abandon him, is at his side during times of difficulty, and is his helper. He is always with him, from the day of his birth to the day of his death. He protects him from his enemies. He is therefore more trustworthy than anyone, and gives without expecting anything in return. That incomparable friend is Allah. Allah is believer's most trusted, closest friend. He frees those who believe in Him from weakness and error, gives them a superior life, as well as endless happiness in the hereafter. Those who are unaware of this, however, spend all of their lives looking for a rich and capable person or force they can trust one powerful enough to resolve their problems no matter what the situation. Yet in doing so, they forget our Lord, who created them, who allows them to lead their lives, possesses great knowledge, and has power to do anything. They turn to Satan, who contributes nothing to their lives apart from evil, and prevents them from enjoying their share of paradise in the hereafter. That is the beginning of the end for such people the entrance to a dark world. Those who believe in Allah and have sincere faith, however, enter a noble and auspicious life free of all suffering and loss. Because Allah has ensured that those who believe in Him and stay true to His religion and words will be saved, He will give them their truly great reward in the hereafter. Allah is the only true friend of believers in this world and the next. He is Allah. There is no God but Him. He is the knower of the unseen and the visible. He is the all-merciful, the most merciful. He is Allah. There is no God but Him. He is the King, the most pure, the perfect peace, the trustworthy, the safeguarder, the almighty, the compeller, the supremely great. Glory be to Allah. Above all, they associate with Him.